Hi everyone, welcome to Impact Academy. So today let us continue with science and technology. So last class we have seen 40 questions. Let us continue with 40 first question. So consider the following statements regarding the global footprint network. So let us see what is global footprint network. So global footprint network is an independent think tank originally founded in 2003. It was established as a charitable not-for-profit organization. Okay, it's a not-for-profit organization. Global Footprint Network develops and promotes tools for advancing sustainability, including the ecological footprint and biocapacity, which measure the amount of resources we use and how much we have. These tools aim at bringing ecological limits to the center of decision making. So basically, it's about ecological footprint and biocapacity. Okay. So every year, Global Footprint Network produces a new edition of its national footprint accounts, which calculate ecological footprint and biocapacity of more than 200 countries and territories from 1961 to the present. So it has also launched the Ecological Footprint Explorer, Open Data Platform, etc. So basically, try to remember Global Footprint Network. So it is a not-for-profit organization looking after ecological footprint and biocapacity. Okay, try to remember that and. Earth Overshoot Day marks the date when humanity's demand for ecological resources and services in a given year exceeds what Earth can regenerate in that year. That is called Earth Overshoot. That means whatever humanity, that is we as a people using all this uh, natural gas, electricity and all the resources, plants, animals, everything. Okay. So whatever resources, for example, um, if we are uh, using uh, so much amount of, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, energy, okay. It, is the earth able to regenerate itself in that particular area? Suppose the uh, people are killing, uh, say, 100 chickens. Okay. Is there another, uh, what you say, system where that 100 chickens is being replenished? Okay. That is how you can uh, maintain a certain amount of sustainability, right? So, for the even for the future generations, for example, you uh, finish, uh, you use up all the coal reserves or the iron ore reserves. So, in the future, uh, there won't be any more uh, uh, coal or iron ore. Okay, so that is what is called uh, sustainable development. That is development keeping in mind the uses uh, needs of the future generation also. So Earth Overshoot Day is when the demand for ecological resources and services in a given year exceeds what Earth can regenerate in that year. So Earth Overshoot Day is hosted and calculated by the Global Footprint Network. So Global Footprint Network is looking after the Earth Overshoot Day also. So, it is basically looking after how much resources we are using, how much we are using more than required, how much we are able to replenish and all that. So, World Summit on Sustainable Development 2002. Sustainable Development is a very important topic. So, this World Summit on Sustainable Development 2002, also known as the Earth Summit, it was held in Johannesburg, South Africa. It was convened to discuss sustainable development by the United Nations. Okay. So, this is in 2002. It gathered a number of leaders from... Uh, uh, business and action. Ten years after the first Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, it was therefore also informally declared Rio President. So, in uh, Rio, this Earth Summit is basically the summit which happened in uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Okay, that is called as the first Earth Summit. And ten years after, so it happened in 1992, right? So again in 2002, you had the World Summit on Sustainable Development. This time it is in Johannesburg, South Africa. So it is called also called as Rio Plus Ten. So, this Rio Summit, Earth Summit, also called as Rio Summit 1992, is a very important summit from the point of view of sustainable development. So, now let us look at the question. So, consider the following statements regarding Global Footprint Network. It was established by the World Summit on Sustainable Development in 2002. <laughs> so, it was established in 2003. Okay, and it is not uh, what you say directly related to the World Summit on Sustainable Development. Okay, that's a different thing. That is part of the Rio Summit, Earth Summit, Rio, uh, Rio Summit. Okay, Rio Plus Ten. Uh, that is about World Summit on Sustainable Development. This Global Footprint Network is different, and it is in 2003. So this is wrong. 2002 is wrong, and it is not established by Sustainable Development Summit. It is different. So it is responsible for hosting and calculating the Earth Overshoot. That is correct, right? So, it is, also, it is looking at the earth or should day, how much, uh, for example, in a particular day, whether we are using more than what is the uh, natural capacity of earth, okay. So, 2 is the only right, so 41B, 2 only. So, which of the following statements are correct regarding the National River Conservation Plan? 
so river conservation and all is very important so let us look at river conservation plan so the national river conservation plan was initiated in 1995 okay it was uh, started long back subsequently all the projects for river cleaning in the country were brought under nrcp national river conservation plan so it is under the purview of minister of environment forest and climate change so try to remember this ministry specifically because uh, because it is river for example if they say minister of jal shakti okay so if uh, they say that national river conservation plan was initiated by uh, minister of jal shakti you will think yes it is right okay it looks right but try, that's why where there is a deviation try to remember it uh, better so in this particular case national river conservation plan uh, 1995 it is under the purview of the minister of environment forest and climate change so the objective of the national river conservation plan is to reduce the pollution load in the rivers through implementation of various pollution abatement works so basically to reduce the pollution in the rivers okay not in the atmosphere or anything in the rivers interception and diversion works laying of sewage systems to capture raw sewage flowing into the rivers okay so rather than uh, dumping everything in the rivers you will have this uh, sewage systems which will capture the raw sewage setting up of sewage treatment plants very very important for treating the diverted sewage construction of low cost sanitation targets to prevent open defecation on river banks construction of electric crematoria and improved wood crematoria to conserve the use of wood okay so basically when a person is dead rather than uh, using wood using this electric okay the body goes in and the ash will come out okay so riverfront development works such as improvement of bathing guards okay all these things public participation and awareness capacity building so all this comes under river conservation next nrcp doesn't have any sub schemes national lake conservation program is a separate central sponsored scheme under same ministry moe fcc okay that is national lake conservation so you have to keep in mind national river conservation and lake conservation are two different programs they are not related okay so since 2013 national lake conservation program along with the national wetlands conservation program have been merged into a new integrated scheme called national plan for conservation of aquatic ecosystems npca so this is very important okay try to observe this national uh, river conservation is something different then wetlands are also very important okay rivers are different rivers are where there is a huge water body that is continuously flowing okay when it is not flowing when it is stagnant then it is lake okay when it is smaller in size and stagnant water then it's called pond okay wetlands are combination of wet area and uh, marshy uh, marshy uh, soily areas okay especially like uh, the sundarbans or harike wetlands okay koringa wetlands all these things so basically there is a combination of water and mud and uh, land etc that is wetlands so these two programs one is the national lake conservation program and another is national wetland conservation program those two have been merged into npca national program for conservation of aquatic ecosystems and that is not related to the national river conservation so try to uh, remember that so currently nrcp excluding ganga because for ganga you have a separate uh, uh, you have a separate program uh, national ganga rejuvenation etc because uh, it's uh, highly polluted and it's a big river and uh, it has a lot of uh, spiritual significance also so there is a separate program for ganga so except ganga and tributary nrcp has covered polluted stretches of 33 rivers in 76 towns okay most of this is andhra pradesh goa gujarat jnk jharkhand karnataka kerala madhya pradesh maharashtra nagaland odisha punjab sikkim tamil nadu telangana etc okay so this is about the uh, some of the key points which you have seen about the national river conservation plan okay so now let us look at the question which of the following statements is correct regarding the national river conservation plan so it includes riverfront development works and construction of low cost sanitation toilets this is correct we have seen right uh, riverfront development sewage treatment and the low cost sanitation toilets all this all the states are covered under the national river conservation now we have seen only few are covered right how many are covered in uh, 15 states okay total we have 28 states right out of 28 only 15 are covered so not all are covered national lake conservation plan is a sub scheme so remember this okay if there is no sub scheme national river conservation plan is uh, separate this national lake conservation and national wetland conservation those two have been merged into aquatic ecosystem conservation so fine so it is under ministry of water resources 
river development and Ganga river. This is also wrong. It is under the Ministry of, uh, we have seen, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Okay, that is very important. Because as I said, this, if you look at the statement, it will look like it is the right thing. Because we are talking about rivers and this is Ministry of Water, River Development. So, it makes sense. But it is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So, whenever there is a clear deviation from the expectation, So, whenever there is a clear deviation, try to remember better. Okay. So, this is the, it includes riverfront development works and construction of low cost uh, sanitation and toilets also. Next, if you see, so consider the following statements regarding the loss and damage fund. Okay. This is very important. This is a recent thing. So, let us look at what is this uh, loss and damage fund. So, recently at COP28, that is the conference of parties 28. 196 parties adopted the decision to operationalize the loss and damage fund. So, this COP21, okay, we have seen on the uh, that is the Paris uh, uh, Climate Conference, right? COP21, 22, all these things we have. So, this COP27 was held at Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt to 2022, okay? So, especially for group 2 kind of uh, exams, okay, such questions are also asked. They will say COP26, uh, 27, 28, and this side they will give the places and ask to match. So, what this loss and damage fund does is, it refers to the negative consequences that arise from the unavoidable risks of climate change. Okay. So, if climate change happens, okay, and that's only the temperatures rise, then there are some risks like rising sea levels, prolonged heat waves. So, we are actually facing a prolonged heat wave right this time. So, desertification, acidification of the sea, this will affect the corals and the marine life. Okay, bushfires we have seen in Australia and uh, we have seen in Brazil, species extinction and crop failures. So, uh, to, uh, in order to deal with these things, there is what is called as a loss and damage fund. And this was uh, adopted in the recent COP28, Conference of Parties 28. And in uh, 2022, it was held at Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, or COP27. So, the establishment of a loss and damage fund was for many the highlight of the United Nations uh, conference climate conference uncc okay uh cop 27 so th this cop 27 this loss and damage fund was the highlight and the culmination of decades of pressure from climate vulnerable developing countries the fund aims to provide financial assistance to nations most vulnerable and impacted by the effects of climate change so So, if you look at the question, consider the following statements regarding the loss and damage fund. So, we have already seen it uh, is the fund for uh, all those uh, climate change based risks. So, it aims to provide financial assistance to nations most vulnerable and impacted by the effects of climate change. So, this is true. That is the purpose of the fund. And it was operationalized at COP21. Okay, that is the UN Climate Change Conference in Paris. So, COP21 is the most uh, important one. Uh, it, uh, that is where it all began. So, this Paris uh, conference, okay, Con Paris conference on climate change, okay, we have uh, this, uh, all these uh, treaties are very important, okay, Montreal Protocol, Kigali Agreement, Kyoto Protocol, all those we have seen, right, Montreal, Montreal uh, Protocol is ozone layer depletion and uh, Kyoto is greenhouse gases, okay, and UNFCCC, United Nations uh, Framework Convention of Climate Change, that is the umbrella uh, framework and then you have this UN Development Program and all these things. So, all those are important. Similarly, this COP21 is also very important. So, this is not uh, COP21. This is COP27. We have seen, right? The latest one is COP28. Okay. COP27 is in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. And it gave the loss and damage fund. So, recently, Prime Minister launched the PM PVDG scheme on the occasion of the Janjatiya Gaurav Devas. Okay, recently this was launched for PVTGs, particularly vulnerable tribal groups. In this context, consider the following statements. So, let us first look at what is this PVTG. So, recently the Prime Minister launched the 24,000 crore, try to remember if you can, 24,000 crore Pradhan Mantri PVTG, particularly vulnerable tribal groups mission aimed at the holistic development of around 28 lakh primitive tribals spread across 220 districts across the country. Okay, so roughly around 28 lakh uh, PVTGs are there, try to remember that. On the occasion of tribal icon Birsa Munda. So Birsa Munda, we have seen the uh, 
Jharkhand uh, in that, uh, what is it, the Munda Rebellion, okay, Munda Rebellion also called as Ulgulan in uh, 1899, okay, 80, uh, 1899, if I am not wrong, or uh, just cross check that uh, Munda Rebellion is also very uh, prominent, okay. Okay, on his birth anniversary and the third Janjatiya Gaurav Devas. So, for this uh, PVTGs, this mission is PM Janjatiya Gaurav Devas. Okay, Janajatiya, basically tribals. Uh, the mission is aimed to improve the social economic conditions of the 75 PVTGs by saturating PVTG families and habitations with basic facilities such as safe housing, clean drinking water, sanitation, improved access to education, health and nutrition road and telecom connectivity, sustainable livelihood opportunities. So, all the basic facilities to be provided to the 75 PVTGs. So, try, try to remember this. Around 75 PVTG groups are there. Okay. And uh, it would uh, almost benefit 28 lakh primitive tribals. So, these are 75 groups. Okay. Different groups. And each group may contain many thousands of people. And overall, there are 28 lakh people that are benefiting from it. So, PVTGs are characterized by a pre-agriculture level of technology, stagnant or declining population, extremely low literacy and subsistence level of economy that is just living on day-to-day -day basis. Today, we have uh, uh, gathered some fruit or some roots, okay, that is fine, but today we are living, okay, that is subsistence level of uh, economy. So, PVTGs were recognized as a separate category based on the findings of the 1961 Devar Commission. So, this is also very important, these commissions are very important. So, 1961, Devar Commission, it has identified that there are, among the tribals, there are what are called as PVTGs who are still more backward and more primitive. So, for them, we have this PM Janjatiya Gaurav Devas. Uh, the idea is to uh, provide basic facilities, budget of 24,000 crore and targeting 75 PVTGs in 18 states and duties living in 22,544 villages. So, to ensure coordination and effective implementation, Ministry has appointed one nodal officer for each PVTG community and they are visiting their habitations to understand their requirements. The Ministry of Tribal Affairs is the nodal ministry. So, this nodal ministry also try to understand. Because this is about the tribals, the ministry is also Tribal Affairs Ministry for overall policy planning and coordination of the programs for development of the scheduled tribes. Option A is the correct answer. Okay. So, let us see what is the question now. Recently, the Prime Minister launched the PM PVTG scheme on the occasion of Janjatiya, Janjatiya Gaurav Devas. Okay, in this context, consider the following statements. It aims to bring critical infrastructure to the 75 PVTG communities, which is true. We have seen 78 PVTG communities. To ensure coordination, it aims to appoint one nodal officer for each state. So, this is not for each state. This is for each PVTG community. The Ministry of Rural Development is not the nodal ministry. Okay, Ministry of Tribal Affairs. So, only one is correct. So, 44A is correct. So, 45, National Air Quality Monitoring Program, NAMP, determines the status and trends of ambient air quality with respect to which of the following. Okay, so let us look at what is National Air Quality Monitoring Program. So, Central Pollution Control Board is executing a nationwide program of ambient air quality monitoring known as the National Air Quality Monitoring Program. So, this is also very frequently questions are asked about this National Air Quality Index and all these things. Fine. So, the network consists of 804 operating stations covering 344 cities, towns in 28 states and 6 union territories. So, the objectives of the National Air Quality Monitoring Program are to determine the status and trends of ambient air quality, to ascertain whether the prescribed ambient air quality standards are violated, to identify non attainment cities, to obtain the knowledge and understanding necessary for developing preventive and corrective measures, to understand natural cleansing process undergoing in the environment through pollution dilution, dispersion, wind-based movement, dry deposition, precipitation, chemical transformation of pollutants generated. So, basically, it is looking at the uh, air quality, what kinds of pollutants are there, what kind of cleaning process is naturally happening, how often the pollutants are getting deposited, okay. So, all these things. So, under NAEP, four pollutants, majorly sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, that is NO2, this suspended particulate matter, PM10, okay, and fine particulate matter, PM2.5. This 2.5 is more dangerous because it is so small, it can go deep into the lungs and cause permanent damage. 
they I was so try to remember under this national air quality monitoring program what are the air pollutants okay so see that carbon monoxide carbon dioxide those things are not there okay so try to observe sulfur dioxide nitrous nitrogen based oxides pm10 and pm2.5 only those four are monitored monitoring meteorological parameters such as wind speed and the wind direction relative humidity and temperature are also integrated with the monitoring air quality so along with air quality is also looking at wind speed direction relative humidity temperature and all those things so uh, national air quality program determines the status and trends of ambient air quality with respect to which of the following so we have already seen carbon dioxide is not there right we saw nitrogen oxides of nitrogen is there correct temperature wind speed direction is also there pm10 pm2.5 is there and uh, sulfur dioxide is also there carbon dioxide is not there so 2 3 4 5 6 okay a option a is the answer so this is also important national air quality monitoring program fine thank you